Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. The main purpose of this clip is to help a client tame her baby button quails. But anyone else who might find this useful, you're most welcome to follow. Okay, caveat. Number one, whatever I share here is based on my own experience. I've hatched umpteen batches of button quails and I found that these methods work for me. Number two, these tips are not a 100% guarantee that they will work in every situation for every individual. That's because, number three, every bird is an individual. Just because it works for chick A, it doesn't mean it will ch work for chick B because some chicks are just too independent. No matter what you do, they'll end up being not that tame anyway. That brings us to number four. You need to understand the nature of button quails. They are, at the end of the day, birds. They're not dogs. So no matter what you do, it doesn't mean that they'll end up like a dog. Meaning they will uh, obey your commands, or they will snuggle up, or they will come whenever you call. They're birds. <laughs> okay, let's move on to what you should do on day one, which is the day they hatch. On day one, they're most of the time sleepy and... Uh, they're just really sleepy. So you shouldn't really be handling them on the first day. You should just let them rest. However, there is a way to remove them from the incubator. Um, and there is a way to imprint on them. Meaning, you want them to recognize you as their mommy. So if you have a lot of people in the house, it's best to not have everybody showing their faces to the chick on day one. Make sure it's you if you are the one who, who will be handling the babies regularly, okay? Then if there are other members of the house who want to interact with them, that will be a bit later when the chicks have gotten used to you as their mom. At least they will have one point of security that human beings are not out there to eat them. They will associate, if they are close to you, they will associate human beings as a non-threat. So day one, do imprinting. What can you do? It's good to have um, an incubator that has a clear wall. So, or clear dome, whatever. So that once they're hatched, they can see you. They can see you through the wall. And then, when they come out, they'll be chirping. They'll be chirping and chirping because they're calling for their mother. So what do you do? What you can do is put your face up there, right in front of them, and your finger, and you chirp. Or you make some call, or you speak to them with this consistent tone of voice. Then, if you're lucky, they'll associate your face, your finger, and your voice with as being their mom. Then... When you want to pick one out from the incubator, what you can do is put your hand slowly inside in front of them like this. Some of them will immediately climb on your hand and snuggle. Or they'll try to go up some vertical surface like this because that's how they, <laughs> that's how they try to get under, moms, under their mums. If they're panicky, right after they come out of the egg and after they fluffed up, they will. If, if they're panicky and they run around the, the incubator like this, try to approach them from the front and not from behind, like this. Go from the front and pick them up like this. The minute you have them in your grip, try to enclose, enclose them inside your palm so that they can't pop out of any holes and fall, okay? 
If one hand is a bit ungainly because you're afraid of crushing them, quickly use the other hand to cover them like this. When you do this, it's exactly the same feeling as the mother sitting on top of them. And this makes them feel very, very secure. Okay, then you take them out of the incubator like this. Then there is no risk of them leaping off your hand, which has happened to me before. Leaping off like this. Woohoo! Or if there's a, a, a little hole because they're so tiny, they'll jump out of the hole and fall on the floor. <laughs> okay, so once you've taken them out, you got to put them in the brooder. I like to have a small brooder. If I have a small batch of chicks like this that I want to tame, I put them in a small brooder like this. That's, that's the relative size of the brooder with the chick. This is an actual thing. I have a brooder that's actually this size. It's an aquarium. So day two. Day two is when they need to start eating. So you put a bit of food in there, and then you're going to stick your hand in and point at the food. Over here, over here, come and eat. If some of them are a little bit smarter, they see your hand peck, supposedly pecking at something on the floor, and they'll come and investigate, and they copy. Eventually, they'll start eating. They know, oh, so this is food. Then they'll associate your hand with mommy's beak. This is mommy's beak. Mommy says, eat this, eat this, see, I'm packing at this. So they'll start eating it. If you consist consistently do this, they'll see your hand not as a threat, not as some giant thing that grabs them, but as their mom. You can't assume that just because you have done an imprint on day one, that they will, for the rest of their life, associate your hand with their mom. Okay? It has to be a daily very regular practice. You need to keep sticking your hand in in that little space so that they lose fear of your hand if and if there are any that are scared of you and they they have this permanent image of your hand as mom. They may not associate your hand with your face yet at this point. Right? And then another thing is that if it's a small brooder like this it will be easier for them to spot the food because it is a huge place like this whole table and the food is like here and here and here and they're trying to get the attention and then they're all over the place like this. It's a little bit difficult. Plus, they feel a bit threatened if it's a wide open space compared to a small one like this. They feel a bit more secure. Also, what I do is on and off, I will switch off the heater. I will switch the heat lamp off uh, for two reasons. One, sometimes it overheats. In a tropical uh, country especially, it gets hot very easily. Second reason is that I want them to associate my hand with the heat that a mama button quail will give. So when the light is off, when the heat lamp is off, they start to feel cold. And they'll start calling. And or they whine. Like that. that means they're feeling cold. Or they're calling for their mom. So what I do is, I stick my hand in like this. And I gather them. Sorry. I gather them like this. And I huddle them with my fingers. Gently. Gently, of course. Over time, you would know how to gauge how much strength to put. So, hold them like this, and you indirectly force them to huddle. Plus, they have this feeling of something over them and holding them. They'll feel secure, and they'll associate your hand with um, security, warmth, even love. Because... When, when you hold them like this, you can use your thumb or your finger to stroke them. And they really love this. They love being stroked. In this sense, they are a little bit like dogs. They like to be stroked. 
on the head, on the side of the head, um, sometimes the wing, but not really the back because for some reason they, they don't enjoy being stroked on the back. Okay. Eventually, you'll be able to take them out of the incubator. And any time they see your hand, they'll just come for it. For example, I have this picture where I put my hand like this, and the chicks are nearby. They, when they saw my hand, they just go straight up to my hand and try to snuggle there. I don't even need to go after them. Like this picture. Then, there's another way where I use both hands. I have one hand like this, sorry, one hand like this, and they're sitting here like this, and I cut my hand over them, like that. They feel really secure like this. In fact, if you totally enclose them like this and you pat their head, they'll snuggle even deeper in your hand and they'll wriggle around trying to get comfortable. Eventually, they'll fall asleep. As they grow a little bit older and they're already so used to your hand, they might even want to sleep in only your hand. For example, this picture. What I did was, for this chick, I put my hand in like this and she just climbed on and fell asleep like that with the legs sticking up. And then, when it got a little bit older, I could reach in and hold it halfway up above the others like this and it would just sit there for the longest time looking down like as if it's on a balcony. <laughs> if it trusts you enough, you can even put it on top of your pet. Like this one. As you get a little bit older, keep interacting with them by handling them on a daily basis. When I mean what I mean by daily basis is as much as humanly possible. I held them for hours on end, especially when they're babies. I put them in my hand like this, and then they'll get comfortable, so I start taking a nap. I put them in here, then I cover them like this, and I go to sleep. And then go to sleep too. <laughs> If they wriggle, it's fine. It's just because they're trying to get comfortable or they want to poop. If they wriggle really hard and they try to come out, it means they need to poop. Just let them come out, let them poop. <laughs> okay, when they're teenagers, they will look half feathered like this picture. And this is a photo of them sitting on my lap. This batch became so tame they'll crawl up onto my lap on their own. And each time I get them to do that, I'll say, come, 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 come. So eventually they learn that this come, come, come means come to me, come to me, rather than using human language, come to me, like that. <laughs> I think it's easier for the bird to understand if you use just one sound. So this batch that's sitting on my lap, what I did was I even took afternoon naps, short afternoon naps with them uh, on the couch. They are not really sleepy anymore at this age, but they still like to huddle and cuddle. So they, they would just crawl around under my hair, go under my clothes, squeeze under my neck. It's like a game for them. 
This was a very good. Uh, th this this is a very good bonding process because now as adults, they are so tame. They would still come, and at one point, uh, they still enjoyed sitting on my lap as adult birds. Some babies are a little bit more special, like this one. Is it focused? She, unlike the others, did not panic when she, she was separated from the other babies. So I could hold her on her own for a very, very long time. And she didn't call to the others or, or panic and try to get, to get to her siblings after a while. She would just happily sit there and let me snuggle and give her nose kisses. So the end result, she became an extremely tame button quail that you see here. She just sit there, let me hug her and not panic. Okay? So these tame birds they should be able to sit in your palm like this without you needing to have a firm grip on them. In fact, some birds do not like to have... They don't feel... I think maybe they feel threatened. They don't feel nice when, as an adult when you have a hand over them like this. Some of them don't, don't like it. So... You can just let them sit on your palm like that, and they're fine. 